to the horse slaughter plant. Um, I've given you all a packet, and uh, we will put some of this online for the, for the public. Um, the bottom line is, who are these people? Do we want these people in our community? And the answer is a resounding no. I don't care what kind of facility they're putting in. If you look beyond the facility and look who's going to put this facility in, these are not the people we want in our community. This involves a Belgium corporation called Chevetico. Chevetico has operated horse slaughter facilities uh, in the United States with great harm done. Uh, I had to do everything but hogtie mayor of, uh, of Kaufman, Texas, because she wanted to fly up here so desperately and talk to you about what they did to her community. And that but did put in the packet for you guys one of her letters. Um, but Chevetico uh, will, will own over 50% of this. This is a Belgium corporation. Um, so they will be coming in here uh, from a, uh, and getting um, tax breaks uh, and using our facilities, using our environment. And the meat is, they've been very open. So the one thing I can say has been totally honest about them is that they intend to breed horses for slaughter. Breed horses for slaughter. They intend to clone, genetically engineer for the perfect horse for slaughter. And this is for human consumption, no one's made, and it's for profit. But profit to a Belgian corporation for overseas consumption of horse meat. It's not going to be in the United States. The other person involved is the United Equine LLC. Now, we could start to write a book on Sue Wallace. And one of the things I can tell you about Sue Wallace is that uh, she is a legislature from a legislator from Wyoming. Uh, beyond that, she's taken bankruptcy. She will be the president, she tells us. When she was asked, uh, she said she was going to be the president of the facility. Uh, her lawyer, Dan Ertle, came to my office because of all the investigations she's had on shady, fraudulent deals. He read. Now these letters, I will tell you, I asked for copies of them so that I could present them to you, but he refused to provide them to me. But he read from letters, because I kind of wanted to check with the prosecutor myself, uh, from two prosecuting attorneys from Wyoming saying, these complaints of fraud were unfounded, and a second letter from a second prosecuting attorney that these complaints of fraud were unfounded. I really want someone coming to my community who has to introduce himself with two letters from prosecuting attorneys. I'm not a fraud. And that's good. I agree. I love that one. <laughs> so uh, she's a bankrupt with numerous investigations called into her conduct. Her, she's got uh, citations in the legislature for there are some investigations going on there. So you might ask yourself, you know, we have Tony Duggar outstanding, uh, Don Wells, I take my hat off to them. They do a great job for us. Uh, so we have them in this community. And what would you do if you had this primo facility that was going to make millions of dollars for Mountain Grove in your, in your constituency, and you took that facility to Wyoming? What if Don Wells took this? What, we wouldn't think much of Don Wells, would we? We'd be going, Don, you got a real problem here. You know, you're supposed to be taking care of us. If, in fact, it's a legitimate business, a legitimate corporation. And the bottom line is, she tried to take it to Wyoming. She did, and in fact, um, Temple Grandin said that she had been contacted and the whole thing fell apart. She had no money. So she's not doing it in Wyoming because she can't get it together in Wyoming. She's come here, a lot of hype, and we've not seen any money yet. We've seen her do a lot of talking. Uh, she's just a front for Chevetico is what it boils down to. So we'll have this Wyoming legislator who can't get something like this in her own State, which is her responsibility to get this to her state, not to Missouri. And now we have Chevetico, a Belgium corporation. Um, it, it, and Sue Wallace is the one to call, contacted KY3, contacted the news leader to do stories. We were not really wanting to move into this phase. We were doing our work, trying to do our homework on these organizations. We did not want to say anything that had not been checked, double checked, and triple checked. And when I get people all over town calling me, she's telling things to the newspaper and the TV, and I said, just be quiet, people. You know, we need to get our facts together, because when we do talk, it's going to be in the proper forum. 
in a proper format and with the facts behind this. So we have kind of laid low and this has kind of bubbled up a little quicker than we would have liked, but here we are tonight. Um, <clears throat> the facility would be out at the Lansing Session Building. Uh, it's my understanding it has not been purchased yet. They make no bones about the fact that uh, LNR Industries is asking a million dollars for the building and that's where that stands as far as I know. But if you go out there, you know, the former, been in both cities, Mike McPherson, says, you know, I had three companies turned down for out there because inadequate sewage. He said, I don't know how they can even think about this. And there is no current waste and sewage in, uh, infrastructure there. And I talked to Johnny Murrow with Skokog. He kind of explained to me what kind of system is there. But it's a difficult system because it's a difficult area. Uh, they're planning on slaughtering, and they put in my office two to four hundred horses a day, uh, and that would end up in we've done. There's been studies done on that, it's like sixteen billion million, uh, fourteen to sixteen million anyway, uh, gallons just feces and urine a year. This has nothing to do with uh, the blood, and the blood in these plants, in anyone and everyone. And the thing is, guys. We got boxes of material, and I can't present it all tonight, but we have studied it. I talked to engineer Gary Schaefer uh, just last night, not, I guess it was last this week, um, from Nixon, Missouri, and he started himself telling me about the problems with the blood. And the problems with the blood is they usually make dry blood meal out of that, but they can't with this stuff, and they end up, uh, the companies that have been shut down in, in Canada was for, for dumping it into streams because it won't break down and the theory is, and Dr. McPherson probably tells a little about this, the theory is that the antibiotics that they have been given prevents the blood from breaking down. And uh, for that reason, it's very problematic, particularly when you're talking about millions of gallons of blood from horses, two to four hundred a day, seven days a week. And they want to run sh two shifts, and they want to do it seven days a week. Um, and this was presented, and in some of these facts I'm giving you about what what they intend to do this, they intend to do that. The minute Dan Earl left my office four weeks ago, tomorrow, uh, I, we got on this and immediately started making contacts. Word got out that we were actively pursuing information. And he said, we want to come and talk to you. We want to bring people with you, with us. And that's what they did. And so when they made the presentation, uh, Dan Earl, uh, gave me a lot of this information based on questions. Roger Lindsay was there, uh, David Gorley was there, people with Intercounty Electric were there, uh, the Jones brothers were there. So anyway, we had a, a huge group of people and I can tell you that I felt that they did answer our questions for the very, I thought Dan did answer the questions. But I'm giving you the answers here today. I don't think you're gonna like them any better more than I did. <clears throat> the thing we, um, the implementation, uh, we talked about the implementation of this. Uh, uh, Tri-County Gas has a fund that is USDA money. It's under a program called RUS Rural Utilities something Services, I guess, RUS. And they can loan up to three quarters of a million dollars to a business that they feel is you know, good for this area. Two representatives from Tri-County were at my office I actually had said a million because that's what we were told, and they corrected me and said, no, Cynthia's three quarters of a million. I mean, it's 750,000, and um, that is, uh, they have to file, and, and Dan at that time said, we don't need any money. We're fully funded. We're going to turn down this money, but we don't know, but there's lots of perks that go with that money, uh, rebates and stuff like that. So now we've got a Belgium corporation who we've got, uh, at least had made application or talked to them about getting a $750,000 loan. Uh, the environmental impact, uh, I am willing to pay, I did not bring him tonight because I knew this would be long tonight, uh, Tom Alley, who's from Missouri, people, he understands our karst, our undercade. He, he is willing to come and talk to you. He has a wonderful man, talked with me at length about this, and he gave us an opinion um, that lagoons do not work well in Missouri karst lands. And uh, they're very prone to leakage. He talked about the West Plains debacle. 
I was longer than a lot of you may remember. No, wait a minute, you all look like you remember that. Uh, where they had for six months to haul in water, 750 airborne, I mean, illnesses from the water. Uh, and, and we're being told that that is exactly what we can expect. It's, you have problems with flooding. It's supposed to be according to what they're telling us at this meeting, a three-tier system. Um, and pre-treated, but we don't know what, where the pre-treatment plant is going to be coming from. Um, in any event, uh, some of you might say, well, have we jumped the gun on this? You know, we, have, we better see if these people have any money. And you know what? If you wait, I always like to tell the kids, if you snooze, you lose. You know, if you, if you, we need to address these concerns now. We need to not let these people just steamroll in here and then wake up and go, well, how'd that get out there? And uh, we contacted DNR. I'm not happy with DNR, by the way. And their lawyer happens to be Polish, and I'm Polish. And he knew what Gwonki was, so he got a ride today, late today when I talked to him. Because DNR has told us repeatedly that they have nothing on this, they've not heard of it. You know, and we're thinking, well, why are these people coming here and they haven't even checked with DNR? The ag people are all telling us for the state of Missouri, this is ridiculous, we've not heard anything, to our Sunshine Law request. Now, each one of you know what a Sunshine Law request is, and that's serious business. Their lawyer called today again, said nothing, nothing, nothing. We've probably called five times. And then in uh, talking with people who attended a meeting at Kabul State Bank in the back room, uh, their boardroom back there, uh, there, there were two members of DNR and two members of the act there. And one of the DNR people gave up and gave a presentation saying, hey, I think this will work based on prior land studies out there, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, we're getting information they know nothing about this. So I talked with their lawyer tonight. And, again, he's Polish, so he's getting a break here. Uh, but I, he said he felt a little bit like I did, like he wasn't being given the full story and he would be getting back with me. I will be contacting the governor's office tomorrow. This is our state people. Our DNR doesn't need to be in a back room somewhere. Four members of your state government and then me being told, we don't know anything about this. So... Anyway, and I'll, I'll send your regards to the governor on that point. <laughs> so, um, it was 15 million gallons a year of fecal. This is the information we have from scientific, um, and that's that alone, and this has nothing to do with the blood. Um, then, of course, there's the social impact. And I originally, when I first heard of this, tried to talk to Eleanor Industry, the Jones Brothers, and several others, and said, look, I am from a community where I was prosecuting attorney back in 1976 uh, with a displaced workforce, you know, one that had been imported. AP Green Fiber Company, uh, union busting, imported a workforce. And they had their own swimming pool, uh, they had their own school, and when any day you were in court, uh, 90, they were 10% of the population and 90% of my criminal prosecution. I was the first woman elected prosecutor in the state, so I'm sitting there going, whoa. I knew the social impact it had, and I tried to explain this to people. Uh, so what I did in order to, you know, give you the facts was stay in the state of Missouri. That's why I told uh, the mayor of Kaufman, Texas, don't come here. We, we can figure this out ourselves. And Knoll, Missouri and Mil Milan, Missouri were the two studies we did. And in Milan, Missouri, and um, Ron Dara owns land up there, and he can tell you stories. Just stop by Ron's office, tell him I sent you. Uh, Ron's a good man. He called me three times in one day saying, I'm on board, I'm on board, I'm on board. I've seen what happened up in Milan, Missouri. My nephew, uh, Matt McKenzie, was a teacher at the elementary school there who left there because he did not want to raise his children in that community. 58% Hispanic. Uh, we talked with the lawyer who's filed the lawsuit, who's also a farmer, about